I would not put myself and create a situation like that. That's kind of, I wouldn't, um, if my ball's been embedded, I, I usually will wait and call someone and kind of wait till everyone's on the same page, wait to look at video. Um, so I, I try to avoid uh, situations like that just for that reason. Just to be clear, you wouldn't have picked the ball up? No, I would wait for an official. Um, you can check. You can put a tee in the ground and, and check your ball. I mean, he did everything uh, by the book, uh, according to the official, and everyone stood by there. Obviously, the talk amongst the boys isn't uh, great, I guess, but um, he's protected by the tour, and, and all, that's all that matters, I guess. Well, Patrick Reed back at it. The, uh, the, the short flight, Damon, mm. from San Diego to Saudi Arabia. First round grouping for Patrick Reed. And Patrick Reed met with the media earlier this week. Well, I've actually, uh, I've actually talked to Shawfly. Him and I actually talked, uh, you know, earlier this week. And uh, you know, really, uh, I'm just gonna leave it between him and I, because you know, really, it, it's one of those things that all you can do is is try to do the right thing, and from that point, move on. Are you concerned at all that it might lead to problems down the line in maybe team competitions like Ryder Cup and President's Cup if your fellow pro players don't seem happy with you? No, not at all. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, we've got one from Marwa Hamid. Marwa, if you could unmute. Yeah, hi. Uh, Patrick, I just want to ask you, I mean, one of the things that's changed over time with with any field, including sports, is, is uh, social media and the immediacy of social media. How everyone can go on there to air their concerns or their celebrations uh, right away. Um, how do you personally deal with 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 social media? I don't read it. <laughs> I think that's the that's the easiest way is to uh, you know not read all the chatter and what's going on, on on social media. And you know, really for me, it's more kind of go out and do my business on a golf course, and uh, you know, go home and and hang out with the little ones, and you know, and try to be a dad once uh, once golf is over, rather than being an athlete. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Marwa. Don't think we've got any more hands up at the moment. So, if there's any more questions, Alex, we'll give you the final one. Did did Xander? Did you call? Did you call Xander? Did Xander call you? Uh, we, we were talking through text. Okay. And well, who, who initiated that? I guess is what I'm asking. He texted me first. Okay. Yeah. And that was on Monday. That would have been. Well, I know you're. I know yeah, you got. That would have been. Yeah, that probably would have been Monday. His it, actually might have been Sunday. Sunday night. His time. I don't. It doesn't mean it didn't show really what the time actually came in because my phone was off whenever we flew overseas and uh, you know we left two hours after if the final putt went in. So you know once the phone went off from there, I didn't land here until what was it 17, almost 18 hours. It was 17 hours later. So. Uh, it, did, it just all the all the text messages came in saying it was that time. Whenever I turned my phone back on, it didn't say what time it was. And one last thing: Do you feel like, even though when I'm I'm not asking you to tell me what the conversation was like in text, but do you feel like it was resolved? When oh, it was we're all good. Done? We're good. We're all good. And Todd Lewis joins us now from the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Todd, I understand you have more on this story. What can you tell us? Well, I just spoke with Xander Shoffley a few moments ago, and he elaborated a little more about that conversation that he had with Patrick Reed, and it was a conversation. Initially, they did text, but it ultimately led to a phone call between Xander and Patrick Reed. I want to go back to what he said on Sunday. Just paraphrasing here, but he said the talk amongst the boys isn't good, talking about his fellow PGA Tour players, and he said, but Patrick is protected by the tour. He read those comments that he made on Sunday and felt as if Patrick may feel that he was taking a shot at him. Well, in, in essence, yes, he was. He did own what he said. He said, yes, there is chatter amongst PGA Tour players that something was at least uncomfortable on Saturday with what transpired on the 10th green. But he did say he was protected by the tour, meaning that he followed all the procedures correctly. So he wanted to reach out to Patrick first via text, and he said out of his own sanity he needed to do that because he did have a built a bit of a guilty conscience so he reached out then they had a conversation and he wanted to let Patrick know that he was not taking a shot at him with those comments on Sunday after play 
that uh, they had a very positive conversation. Xander says that he's going to be on President's Cup teams, on Ryder Cup teams with Patrick Reed, and he wanted to make sure that they were good. I can promise you this. Xander Shoffley does respect Patrick Reed's game. Patrick Reed respects Xander Shoffley's game, but it was a positive conversation, and the air is cleared. And as Patrick Reed reiterated, they are all good. Guys? Tom Lewis reporting from TPC Scottsdale. More from him in just a little bit. So the air is all clear, huh? Shane, is, is this going to linger into the fall? You, you know, I, I was I was diving into the Ryder Cup teams. We, we, we've talked about the Ryder Cup a lot already, and of course we're not going to get there till late September. But you start to dive into the European Ryder Cup team, potential European yep. Ryder Cup team, and you see how successful they've been lately. I mean, look at this. Tommy Fleetwood feels like he's a top five machine. Tyrrell Hatton gets a win a couple weeks ago. John Rahm always there. Rory, of course. Paul Casey, victorious last week. And you look at that team. It's just no drama, Damon. Mm. There, there's no drama on that team. And if you start to flip to the United States side of things, and, and you think Brooks and Dustin Johnson, yeah. right? And you think about Patrick Reed and Alexander. Justin Thomas, of course, has gone through, you know, some things this year already in his career on the golf course that obviously bled into off the golf course. I mean, it's not as, as seamless for the American squad. And again, we're a long ways away from the Ryder Cup, but it just always seems like the Americans have more issues than, than, than the Europeans do headed in. Yeah, and I think that it does occasionally show itself on the golf course, and the only thing we can do is look at the results. What have we seen over the last 20 years when it's Europe against the United States? We see a cohesive European team. They have each other's back. They pull for each other. It's not that the Americans don't want to win, but there's just more stress, more controversy. Brooks and DJ, Brooks and Reed, Brooks and Bryson, <laughs> Spieth and Reed. Though Spieth's probably not going to be on this team unless he, you know, finds lightning in a bottle. But you're right. It seems to be always something. And I think this, you know, we have enough time, I believe, between now and September for them to fix this. But this is just one more thing that the Americans have to overcome. And it's one thing, they also don't seem to kind of pair naturally. They don't seem to get along organically as well as the European team. We saw in the angry golfer, half that Ryder Cup team was in that pit <laughs> on the European tour, laughing and, and making fun of one another. It's just, they pull together so much more naturally. And the Americans, because there's so much more maybe alpha male individuals that it just doesn't seem to as work as easily as it did maybe in the past. Well, you know, you know Paul Azinger's pod system is yeah. something we've talked a lot about being so successful for the Ryder Cup teams. They might have to go pod system just to put together people that actually want to play together. You know, that's yeah. the scary part is because you start to look at how limited these teams are. And if you've got four players that are at each other's throat yeah. throughout the year, it's like, well, we can't pair these people together, can't pair this person with this person, now the stress is on the captains and the vice captains, yeah. right? Well, I wanted to get Zinger to say that. You know, he, you know, he was too kind and too humble, but they kind of strayed away from the pot system, the personalities that he used with Ron Braun, who co-wrote the, the great book about his OA experience at the Ryder Cup and finding the A personality to match with the B personality and letting kind of the dominant players on that team kind of help shape the team in terms of who they would pick as captain's picks. And I, and I wish they would get back to that. And I wish that Zinger kind of had put his foot down a little bit and kind of, you know, poked his chest out a little bit more and said, you know what, doggone it, we, we should be doing this a little bit more uh, than what we've been doing. Can we say one person that's not going to be bothered by the drama is Patrick Reed. I, oh, I'm he convinced he's the most mentally tough golfer since peak Tiger Woods. It, whatever's going on in and around the game, off the golf course, on the golf course, it doesn't bother Patrick Reed's golf game and you see his winning percentage with a 54 hole lead you know he's third behind tiger and ernie in recent history on the pga tour i mean the guy it doesn't affect him and it, it won't affect him at the Ryder cup either he'll go out there and play his game controversies fuel for him it's like flintstones vitamins <laughs> for patrick he just pops them eats them up and goes out and dusts one of the strongest field of the year by five shots we'll see how he plays this week of course